Maing buntag mga katribo. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Mamelu Episode 10, Managing Our Household Ways, the Climate Change Series Part 1. This topic has been requested by former Commissioner Norman B. Baloro, Jade Espanola, Mam Sulita Gomez, and JC Ronquillo. So let us bow our head and feel God's presence. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for all the blessings that we have received. We also thank you for all the challenges that we have encountered for the week, that we are able to recognize that nothing is impossible and everything is possible with your grace. Lord God, we offer to you this activity that it may be able to share our light to those who are willing and open to listen. Lord God, to continue to bless us with thanks and in full faith, so be it, so be it, and so it is. Amen. Good morning. Kumusta? Nakasimba na ba mo? Nakapamahaw na mo? Kumusta man din nasa itong mga balay? So thank you very much for welcoming me to your home, to your space, wherever you are. And now we are being connected, no? In this very short time. So daghan kaing salamat for joining me this morning. So before we start with Ask Mami Lou, episode 10, Managing Our Household Ways, the Climate Change Series, part 1. Updates of my activities last week. We have the Zumba with the senior citizen and Barangay R. Castillo. And I am very happy no, to see that there is an increasing number of senior citizens who are joining our event. And thank you to Miss Amore Hechanova, again, our Zen instructor in Zumba. And many has already attested that their high blood has been stabilized. Their blood sugar has also lowered. So I think this is one benefit. And also our bonding, you know, the good conversations that is taking place with the senior citizens. So we have some age bracket from 70 plus and down to early 60s. So that's the profile about senior citizen so it's a very good venue then we have also a dialogue with barangay our castillo with their personnel and lanex phase one homeowners association of solid waste management you know since march this is a really a continuing activity and i i really appreciate you no know, during that time we have barangay captain ikot salas and also barangay captain glenn escovilla no barangay glenn is a uh, one of the barangay captains and district Three, no, and but he is residing in our village, so we are very privileged. We have two barangay officials, barangay captain, punong barangay in our uh, in our community. So we we have a good discussions there, just like the you know the shared space, non parking space, the comp the compliance on this, uh, the compliance of the different. Ano ba, no? collection point, no? the, the centro in the solid waste management and also the participation of our tricycle drivers because most of them also are contributing into the, the, the unnecessary ba, disposal of the garbage when passengers would try to just throw anywhere. So we really had a very good conversation. I would like to thank especially Kagawad Rosalia Lazida, the one in charge for the environment because she has able to come up with no mga IEC materials, tarpaulin, <clears throat> to just remind our village. And then also, we have realized that even if we are uh, professionals, no, most of our valid village co-owners are professionals from the private and government sectors and the academy. But you know, the problem of garbage is always a continuing dialogue because uh, we have to care for our environment. Then we have also a dialogue session with the Commission on Human Rights at World Palace. So I would like to thank Hope. No, during that time we were able to have up close and personal with Attorney Palpalatok of the uh, chairperson of the Commission on Human Rights. So I was also happy because we were able to come up that there is really a need more of paralegal training. So for our respective communities and under my area of responsibility in Davao del Norte and Davao Oriental, we would be coming up with a paralegal training for our community leaders with the Commission on Human Rights and with the participation also of HOPE, no? HOPE Kababainhan Foundation. Then we have also this one, 
last night reunion with our eight cdc bats mates were able to meet representatives from bats 1974 until 1984 and for me i was really happy and grateful why it is the first time for me to be able to join that after 41 years so i'd like to thank mirna mascardo cagas and also the our big brother you know they were the, in the senior years uh Greg Tanbenko and also I was also happy and grateful because my big brother Roberto Palo uh, I called him my kuya so we were able to meet together with the other batsmates so it's really a good time to see once we were just students looking for our future trying to see our directions and then we happened to see each other and most of them are successful professionals retired retirees and business persons and entrepreneurs but they remain to be very very same no in heart and then also our friend angel chua before he is the early bird now after our reunion he is also the earliest bird the same so very 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 lingao we think it's very enjoyable no we dance that we there were music and there was food and there was an overflow of generosity no from those who were not able to attend and those who were present so it's a wonderful experience this class no, class reunion or alumni reunion then now okay are you ready so let us first understand what is climate change no so for ask mamilo episode number 10 managing our household waste the climate change series just a brief background of climate change and the protection of mother earth works hand in hand they cannot be just on one hand the other hand it's also like a leg no the left and the right that is why we have come up with three-part series to discuss in detail the things we do to protect Mother Earth and at the same time create a habitable safe space in our community amidst climate change. So let us first understand what is climate change. So we, we took some reference materials. June 1, 2023, Manila, Philippines. The Philippines must prepare for the worsening effects of climate change, such as sea level rise and hotter weather already affecting the country, according to Secretary Renato Solidum, Jr. of the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST. Another reference for this discussion is on March 24, 2023, the Philippine Star. So let us also listen to this information. 93% of Pinoy's experience impact of climate change, according to Social Weather Survey. Some 76% of the respondents believe that humanity could do something to stop or slow down climate change if everyone really tried. While 23% said it is beyond humanity's control, a large majority of 88% also agreed that people like themselves can do something to reduce climate risk. So now, maybe some of us are part of the 88%. Do you agree that we belong to the 88%? That are willing to do something to reduce the risk. That is why today for our part one is managing our household waste. Management does not start and stops on waste segregation. It is the deliberate decision of controlling the waste in your home. It starts from buying your household consumption. I have some questions here. You can answer it for yourself or you can answer it in the comment section below. So whatever it is and whatever you please, answer it honestly. Okay. So the first question is does it contain too much plastics most of the fruits and vegetables and some produce in the grocery are wrapped in plastics yes right so do you still want to buy it or would you rather go to the public market or the wet market and buy the same produce without the plastics for me 
I choose to do latter. So I really spend time. No? If I can do it once a week, we really go out and bring our baskets, our recyclable containers for the grocery bags and go to the market. Then, number two. Does the soaps you use are polluting the sea? Sometimes we are not aware because we are just conscious about the cost, easy, accessibility. <clears throat> but have, have we ever read the labels of the soap that we are using? When we continue to use the soaps with bleach and phosphate, you are directly harming the Mother Earth, right? Our family had been using certified organic and biodegradable products for cleaning our house as much as possible except for emergency no washing our clothes and taking a bath and more and that started since 2008 when we made this firm resolution so talking about commitment right number three are the container of your consumables recyclable reusable or biodegradable Again, I would like to repeat these questions. Are the container of your consumables recyclable, reusable, and biodegradable? So, you can answer it no, to yourself. Just reflect on it or you can give the feedback no, in our... Uh, no. So, before I'll proceed, let me know your thoughts about this episode. Please comment down below. Ask Mami Lu is also available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe. I will also include a link related to this topic, like the three things I do to protect Mother Earth, that is an episode three, and the container gardening as climate change mitigation. So just check it out. Okay, so number four. Are you doing research before buying products online? Again, are you doing research before buying products online? Do you buy products to the companies with ethical standards or simply buy it because it's cheap? Factories that does not observe health and environment code are risking our air, water, land, hence global warming. So, it is really very important that if we care for the environment these things that is very up close personal direct to us and we have control no are we are we trying to look at it what do you think number five is do you strictly implement household seg segregation at home including the children are we educating our children or our kasambahay our household or you just wait for them to grow up before teaching them the importance of household solid waste especially the grannies and the titas and the titos. Number six, when someone violates the disposal of household waste, like throwing them in canals, not placing them in designated area or collection point, do you call them out? Or just talk behind their back, hoping someone will take a fight? Because we can see it, no? They just throw it anywhere. What is your attitude about it? Everybody should be responsible in their actions. That is why there is a law to ground us all. It is our responsibility to speak the truth because not doing the things we're supposed to do is called the sin of omission. Whether we like it or yes, truly indeed it is. Any comments? Uh, Grace de Polonia and Solita Gomez is watching. Thank you, Grace de Polonia and Solita for watching, no? This, this topic is actually Grace is also our DRRM and CCA representative of the Presidential Commission for the Urban Poor. So sitting into the National Interagency Committees. So I would like also to greet uh, Angel and also uh, the Pareño couples of UK. No, thank you very much for really supporting our program and also Greg Tanbenko and also would like to also uh, thank all those who are watching our program you know, for sharing their views and ideas. Solita Gomez is watching. Yes, yeah, Solita. Good morning, Solita. How's your Sunday? 
Okay, Grace de Polonia. Climate change is a long-term change in the average weather patterns that have come to define Earth's local, re regional, and global climates. These changes have a broad range of observed effects that are synonymous with the term. Climate change is the single, single biggest health threat facing humanity. Climate impacts are, are already harming health through air pollution, disease, extreme weather events, forced displacement, pressures on mental health, and increased hunger and poor nutrition in places where people cannot grow or find sufficient food. Thank you very much, Grace, no, for that discussion. Actually, we have one incident in the barangay. I think last Thursday. We have this ano, informal a vendor. Uh, actually, she has some already high blood and heart problems, but she sells food along the road of our subdivision going entrance. And then she suffered stroke and she passed away. But because during that time, it's very hot. No? So there are a lot of people are suffering from this and even the health reasons and the food. A lot of people are getting hungry. That's why we are really looking into our poor communities because the poverty is increasing and the capacity of the earth to produce food is also decreasing. So this is really something that we can do about it no? at our own level. If we belong to that 88%, imagine, there is so much that we can do. So thank you very much, Sulita. Yes, indeed, we, let's have a blissful Sunday. And we are calling for all those in schools no, that we can engage not only the students, but the parents. If we can come up with something proactive to engage the parents, even in the college, not only in the elementary, no, to engage them in some proactive and the senior citizens program that we have, especially for climate change. So any comments more? Okay, this video will be uploaded after the live to our official Facebook. Ask Mamilu, Marilu Aseneta Tarona. Please like and follow. Thank you very much. So in summary, to risk the risk of climate change, there should be people's participation. This begins at home. Any comments? Ah, we have some birthday celebrants, no? So we have Beth Benitez, happy birthday. She's also a, a great mom. And also Susan and Boy Kadigal celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary. So blow out, blow out. <laughs> we will have a simple and then uh, no lunch this afternoon, uh, this lunch with also with Ada. We will be celebrating her birthday also. Okay, so... You know, I think that should be people's participation. It begins in the home. That's why even how much budget the government is providing for segregation, but in the household level and the consumption level that we do has not improved. It is a matter of lifestyle. No, imagine that's why even the, ano ba, the, the, the skin protection, because if you can read, there are already many published that they, they said that non-toxic, sunscreen, all this stuff. But if you try to check on the chemicals, they are really, they are harming the skin and they're causing some illness, skin cancers and all these things. No? The research will show that. So our lifestyle, that's why the basic thing is that we go back on wearing hats. You remember that? And wearing long sleeves. You remember the farmers before? They really wear these long sleeves. And then sometimes we change our lifestyle because we don't wear, want to wear those cotton uh, long sleeves because you look like a peasant, a peasant look. And then the women also have these long skirts while they were working or walking along the fields. No, but I think we really have to check. And then the other thing is garbage. These cheap materials of clothing ends up in the dump site. They, they actually comprise a big bulk of these waste materials in our dump site. The clothes. So I think we have to check our lifestyle also. No, How many clothes do we really need to wear? There are a lot of clothes that we are not wearing. And then also we are also the dump site of the ukay ukay and all these things. No, Good if it is already ano ba, reusable. But sometimes they also bring us a lot of these clothes. You know, in one of the countries in Africa, 
what they did really was just to junk there no? from the different countries so we really have to to do something about it because what we can do is to check our lifestyle no imagine 120 million filipinos if you can generate one kilo of used clothing so you think you can only have that one kilo if that is 10 kilos times 120 million and all this stuff ends up in our dump sites so i think we really have to reflect every day of our life how do we live our life how what is its impact in the environment and even educating the little children because all this stuff, all these toys are plastics and non-biodegradable are also uh, adding up to the volume of this garbage and then polluting our air, our water, and all our environment. Grace, you said you're the Polonia. Making small changes in our day-to-day -day activities can make a difference. We must all be aware that what, uh, aware what hurts our dear planet. There are a lot of readings and tips in the website. Yes, that's true, because we are all connected. So one act of this person is connected because we are belonging and we are living in Mother Earth. So we can really remind, because you know, the, sometimes the duty bearers are also need to be reminded. That's why there should be participation in the citizens, in our community, in our barangay. That's, why, that, that's what we are trying. It's also a reflection in our senior citizen that although we are fulfilled and we are busy, we have some challenges on health, but if you can devote at least two hours, two hours every day or every week, I mean, for volunteer work, for engagement in the environment, that is really something you know, that we can do. So let us count the total population and all these things. If we can share that even one hour to really deliberately engage because we have to remind them because they have all the excuses no because of the overwhelming thing but if it is very ano, connected then we can do something about it okay so please follow marilu tarana and tiktok ask mamelu and on instagram or scan my qr code to check the latest updates in my social media Next Sunday is the part of climate change series. The topic is growing your own food. Yes, because as Grace have said, that there is already hunger, malnutrition that is happening. What we can do about it? And in our own level, in our own household. So I would like to thank my chicken this morning before we started. I harvested five eggs. So we'll have a protein supply you know, for natural homegrown native chicken eggs so they just eat the surplus in our kitchen no they also eat our kitchen waste some vegetables and we just buy them some just like the corn grits but very little they just know uh, okay time check is 10 23. wow it's 10 23. so how is everybody so i would like to have some you have some greetings there and also we would like to announce that uh, we are still continuing no? for our uh, we will have a an activity with the dsw the enhanced poverty against poverty and hunger project for sustainable livelihood program which sir sherwin gomez the area coordinator of the sw region 11 will have a coordination meeting on uh, july 28 at the pcop office so sure sherwin see you on july 28 uh, for our discussion because there are several project areas that we are also preparing for that uh, no activity and hope that will contribute to hunger you now overcoming hunger is a deliberate action with the interagency activities sheila mp thank you for sharing thank you sheila good morning sheila so let's have gardening in Baganga, Sheila. I have schedules in Baganga. I hope you can arrange your schedule so that we can check also your constituents in that area. So meeting so senior citizens. Yes, this afternoon we will have a meeting with the senior citizens 
in chapter 2 so calling all the officers Nora, Eleanor Gonzalez we have also Susan Katuran Sir Oscar Dingding and all the other members area coordinators Bibi Ricardo and also the rest of the group let's have let's meet at 5 p.m so that we can plan out for our assembly because our assembly we plan to have health nutrition counseling and also the help from the uh, city health office now agdao district so what i can say really to our classmates to our friends to our co-workers if you are reaching our age a senior citizen if you really want check on the barangay there is really a lot of things that needs to be done even this adult literacy program i know that there are a lot of Teachers have retired in your barangay. You know, most of the children have difficulty in reading or even writing or in mathematics. So if you can arrange a small session with, with these boys who are skipping classes, then that is really a big service that we can do you know, to them. And then it's also a very meaningful one that you can have your purpose. Okay? Do not keep your knowledge especially those teachers who have really mastered in mathematics, mastered in grammar, masters in all, all these things who have retired. Just find time and you will be amazed that you will have extra energy by doing that because you can see that these children, these sometimes terrible <laughs> youth in the barangay, there is still hope. They are just looking for someone to find them. You no, know? So, just, I know, just find something to do especially for our climate change because uh, we are the vulnerable especially the elderly the pwds and the with special needs we are we will be the most vulnerable ones uh, affected by the climate change and even the children are getting very sick now no they are quite very sensitive yes miss moti grace is savior de polonia making small changes in our day-to-day -day activities can make a difference we must all be aware uh, that the, uh, uh, who are the worst contributors to climate change. Research says in a million tons CO2, e, uh, China is the largest emitter, USA second, uh, then India, then Russia, Japan, Brazil, Indonesia, oui, Indonesia, Asia, Iran, and Canada. A quote says, a nation that destroys its soils, destroys itself. Thank you, Ati Malu. Thank you very much, Grace. No, thank you also for that uh, information that you are sharing to us. So, indeed, indeed, no, if we can see sometimes we get mesmerized by these developed countries, but how are they contributing also to the destruction of Mother Earth? So, there are things that we can control among ourselves. So, let's start it. So, Philippines is not yet in the contributory. So, we, we can just protect and our lifestyle. No? What's important is we are alive, healthy, happy, then rather than into, into much, much development that destroys Mother Earth. Because if we allow that at the end, we are also destroying ourselves. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Mam Sulita. Thank you also all those who have requested this topic that we can continue. You might have some stories there. So feel free to share your stories of how to take care of Mother Earth. So that ends our Ask Mamilu episode 10, Managing Our Household Waste, the Climate Change Series, Part 1. So we started with a prayer. We will end up with a prayer. Let us bow our head and feel God's presence. And today, let us also remember our family and loved ones who are sick, who are having a lot of challenges, physical, emotional, mental, and psychological challenges. You know, even Mother Earth, no? The pressure on Mother Earth is affecting also our mental health as uh, residents of this earth. So let us bless Mother Earth and let us and with a prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood than to understand, 
to be loved as to love with all my soul. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in forgiving and in dying we are born to eternal life. Amen. God bless our family. God bless Mother Earth. God bless the Philippines. Lord God, thank you, thank you, thank you, therapy. So just PM me or you can contact Mindanao Pranic Healing Center. No, you can just check on the Facebook. Okay? So daghang salamat. Magkita-kita ta next Sunday diri sa atong Ask Mommy Lou. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Maayong udto. Bye-bye.